人は皆誰にも見せぬ自分を持っている。Truth. 友人にも恋人にも家族にさえも貼り付けた笑顔や虚勢で本音を隠し。These are pretty huge secret identities to hide, though. We all got bodies, except for Anya. Yeah, a little bit of recap here. Recap with a little philosophy that extends even to us common folk who are not spies or assassins or psychics. The spy stuff is cool and all that, but I just want to see them live their domestic lives. <laughs> is that weird? It also occurred to me, after watching the last episode, that it seems almost inevitable that at some point, Yoru is going to be hired to kill. Lloyd, or something to that effect. How could that not happen? I appreciate that this was recap with an idea to offer. The idea that we all sort of have dualities or multifaceted elements of our nature. That is, of course, very true for the cast of characters in this show. They have a lot of literal skeletons in their closets. But while that's certainly the case a lot of the time for people, I don't think it necessarily has to be. You know, I think there is a part of it that is sort of just natural and inevitable and healthy, which is that we are different people depending on who we interact with. But a lot of the time, that's just an inevitable function of the other person. An engagement is sort of like a dance or a game or something. And your outputs are going to be largely determined by the inputs. If your actions are not at all adapted to other people, then either you're going to be like an ultra hero that everyone admires, or you're going to be hard to tolerate, depending on how you pull that off. But in terms of secrets, it's something I've been thinking about a lot, actually. And it started with sort of a growing distaste I have for telling lies. I sort of became curious what it would be like to eliminate all sorts of lies in my interactions with other people. And it might sound simple, but it's a lot harder than I thought. Just because no one's perfect, you know, you make mistakes. And then to come clean about your mistakes means risking losing things that you value or not getting things that you want. And the only other solution is to never do anything that you would want to lie about, which also is really difficult because it means never, ever indulging in temptation, never giving into things that you think are wrong or that would compromise you. With others, or what have you. But I will say that even just having that as a guiding star, even if I don't accomplish it as well as I'd like to, has been great. You know, I think there's something really nice about being an open book. There's something really nice about being clean in that way, not having to waste mental energy navigating a complex web of fiction. But I feel like, just most valuably, I just like myself better to not have to look people that I would like to have continued relationships with in the face and sort of feel that twinge deep down that, oh, there's something they don't know. You know, I also happen to think that the more you have things sort of squared away. With yourself, the easier it is to be honest with others. Because you've already sort of dealt with it, you're already sort of not keeping yourself in a tight shell to avoid looking at your flaws. And so if you get it to a point where who you are isn't something that harms you, it's not really going to be effective as a tool of harm in other people's hands either, if that makes sense. What does it matter if someone calls you out on it? You know, you're sort of already there. It's the things that I don't want to see about myself or admit about myself, but deep down know that hurt the most when people bring them up. Now, for these characters, there's obviously a part of it that's just circumstance related, you know, like they have a job and the job involves secrecy, but it's going to be a lot more than that too. It's going to be the fact that they're sort of aware that there's a danger to them and who they are in terms of where they fit as people. We live on Park Avenue, I see. Not bad. Not too shabby. Very organized. Together, we sleep. No! <laughs> Come on. Just wasting time. You don't say. <laughs> I didn't pick up on that. Right, Needle Queen. Needle Thorn Princess. What's her code name? Peanuts. The Forgers. Just forging certificates. Who would have thought? Frankie, too. Frankie just does everything. He's a one man army, this guy. It's going to be a major balancing act trying to fruitlessly hide this from each other. But I guess the advantage is because they're both so preoccupied with their own secrets, they may be not so quick to pick up on each other's secrets. That is amazing. She's loving this. Her parents are not the most stable or ethical, but this is great for her. She's a family. You'll get there eventually. <laughs> or maybe not. Is it going to be like a will they, won't they type thing? They will, though, if they don't kill each other first. It's inevitable. Like, first of all, they are obviously compatible, just in so many ways. The second episode did such a good job, such an amazing job establishing that on just every dimension, like logistically, their unconventional backgrounds, their childhoods, the fact that they'll understand crucial elements of each other's natures and emotions. But then there's just the simple fact that one of the best, most powerful things towards forming any kind of bond is proximity and frequency. Just assuming you get along at a certain base level, spending a lot of time with someone is going to make you close, you know? And then minor detail, they're extremely good looking. So if they have pulses, you know. Key moment, key parenting moment here. 
<笑>ねえ、ほんで。スタックとランドンデア。お好きに使ってください。はい。They're does she move around a lot? Is that why she doesn't have a lot of stuff? <laughs> and now Anya knows where the elephant poison is. <laughs> We're like all in a honeymoon phase already here. It won't all be smooth sailing though, will it? She's really looking for <laughs> some kind of pat on the head or praise or something. She's just not getting it. But I actually sort of love it. Like, I can see them being a great balance for her. Just because he's not being mean necessarily. He's just not being like super sweet. Maybe Yoro could be the one for that. I don't know. I'm not an expert. I don't have any kids. And there's probably a layer of hell reserved for people who talk about kid advice who don't have them. But just from living, I feel like the important thing is not necessarily the words themselves, but sort of the underlying current of emotion. Like, there are people who rib me really severely, but I know that they love me. And so the ribbing is good. It's fun. And there are people who rib me because they don't like me and because they want to take me down a peg and that does not feel good and there are people who praise because they want to be liked you know and there are people who praise because they actually see the, see the good in you we can sort of sniff that out over time i think kids also have a pretty good radar for where the parent's heart is and if they are reliable like if they're people you can lean on and who actually have regard for you i think that's sort of the underlying thing it's pretty clear lloyd will have that for anya no matter how much he you know teases her it can be tough sometimes you know i think there's this emphasis on like being really kind but kindness is not always a kindness in result if that makes sense like you can have a lot of regard for someone and love them and still have have that not mean you crush them in hugs and kisses and praises, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, but it kind of stinks that she laughed at that. <laughs> Looking for daddy's bombs. <laughs> oh no. We're going to lie all the way through. Just lies all the way down. What is she talking about? My one weakness, human beings. Ah, the episode will become normal. Good luck with that. Oh, the big moment! Big moment! <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of big moments in the show. I feel it. Ah. <laughs> the fear. Yes, we are upper crusting it. <laughs> this is how you upper crust, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, relatable. So she's really into it. What are they gonna think when they like see this drawing? Yeah, I didn't really think that through. Not that it's really decipherable. <laughs> That's Mama. Oh, okay. The Mama section is extra bloody. A dog. I knew it was a dog. Is that next? We're gonna get ourselves a dog? I feel like we need a pet. But the pet is secretly... <laughs> I don't know, what would he be? Ninja. The dog is a ninja. That's all I got. The dog is just an accountant. He does their money laundering. We do love our Udings. <laughs> gangster. The dog is a gangster. You don't have to kill in it, Yor. At least she knows who she is. It's fine, it's all taxpayer money anyway. A little compliment? These Udis. She's just in a constant state of blush. They seem to like have a really good dynamic and have fun together. These are all memories they're forming. What? Wait, what? Why? Why the sad face? That is another one of the most powerful things in bonding. It's memories. When I have breakups or similar types of heartbreak, that's one of the most frequent ways the pain manifests in my conscious mind. It's like, those moments were so good. What happened? Even moments that weren't great, that were sort of mundane, have a way of taking on a rose tint in hindsight. Just living peacefully seems like 
beautiful thing. Shared knowledge of each other, shared experiences, shared adventures. Those all come up very prominently, probably not just in breakups, but in loss in general. Those are sort of visible monuments built to capture some of the more intangible value of relationships internally. That's up there with also unrealized visions of the future in terms of what my thoughts take shape as in periods of mourning. And this is them making all of that right now. <laughs> you fool. <laughs> the Jaegerists are coming for you. Yes, I'm going to mention Attack on Titan in every episode. Yeah, I was wondering if she'll get overwhelmed from time to time. I was thinking about that in the museum. It's just so quiet. The politics is a lot for her and the anger from so-called adults. That's an interesting dish. I must not be upper crust enough. She has a thing, huh? It's not going badly. It's like day one. Chill. やはり人生を見捨てた。No。いや、そもそも他人の当てにすることに無理があったのだ。Oof. <laughs> you messed up, Lloyd. Speaking of good memories. There you go. We're back at it. Didn't even lose a step. I'm just resilient. ここで暮らしてる方々の役に立ってるんだって思うと、また頑張ろうって。Right, cleaning up the scum. I feel like he's overthinking this interview thing. There's oh. That's our mom, mama. <laughs> Just taking action. He's booking it. Him too, huh? At least he didn't abandon Anya. There he is. Got him. Very observant. He's got a memory thing, right? Something about his vision. Maybe his last meal. He never gets there. Can you overhear him talking to himself? <laughs> I feel like this is gonna slowly spiral into them not doing what they do. Or doing it on their own terms or being rogue or something like that or being allied with each other. Just looking at it broadly in terms of character development, I think one very common and I think essential part of growth is like not only finding out who you are and how to navigate society successfully, but finding out also where you do not and finding a way to be victorious over that, at least for yourself. Thinking about characters like Aang and Avatar, you know, it's not just about being a great Avatar, it's about being a great Avatar and being a great Aang. This is not a hero story in that way, but there's part of it that's just a universal human story where you sort of have to get to a certain point in your life by following the rails because because you cannot, from childhood through adolescence to even early adulthood or even late adulthood, come up with all of your structure for the way you view the world from the ground up. You know, you sort of take things for granted to give yourself structure, to give yourself safety, to give yourself room to grow, to eventually end up in a place where you can think for yourself. And only in that place can you sort of look back at the structures you've been relying on and start to make them more authentic or navigate them more authentically. So she's an assassin. He's a spy. Maybe it's just not going to be a thing. That's possible. It could just be a plot device that is taken for granted. That would be fine as well. But it wouldn't surprise me if this is them launching on a path that will change them forever and change how they see what they're doing now. And they got similar values. They both sprung to action to help this lady. He is a softie in a way, isn't he? Speaking of memories, <laughs> what a day. <laughs> Remember that time we took down a purse snatcher together with our daughter? This poor girl's been looking for just any praise this whole episode. There you go. Some episode closure. Blushing continues. They're all in deeper than they even realize. It's an odd question to ask for a kindergarten entrance exam, no? I mean, this is as upper crass, crass, upper crust as I've ever seen. <laughs> what are they drinking? Tea? <laughs> Which... <laughs> oh yeah, it's hot cocoa. They got matching cups and everything. He's wearing a tie in the house that's not loosened. They have, what do you call these things? There's a name for them? Saucers. They have saucers. They're good. And they're doing all this and the TV's not even on. What do you want? <laughs> like how much more upper crust could you possibly get? And they're in the same room for that matter. Just goes on and on. Also, you gotta be careful with interviews or any kind of onboarding process being too catered to what you think the other person wants because they're humans too. And if everyone is thinking along the same lines, it reeks of deception 
and putting on airs when you actually want to get a good sense for who the people are. I once helped someone prepare for a job as a flight attendant. I initially wasn't planning on doing that. I just happened to overhear her group interview session and I realized everybody was saying the exact same thing. And later I told her for the follow-up interview that she secured, all she had to do was deviate from the norm in the smallest way and also to think more in terms of being in the other person's shoes and the interviewer's shoes and just being a real person and she would get the job. And she did that and she got the job. Everybody was saying things like, I want to be a flight attendant because I want to travel. And it's like, duh. Or I think customer service is really important. Duh. You know, that kind of thing doesn't impress. I feel like Anya actually is pretty intelligent, pretty precocious, has a good sense of play. I don't know. I think she'll be fine. She managed to pass the written test on her own. Mom is great. You know, as long as the killing thing doesn't get exposed somehow. Here's another weird secret. Because mediocrity or averageness is sort of the norm, to do well, you don't even have to be exceptional. You have to be just slightly better than normal. <laughs> That's my strategy. <laughs> and the difficulty is mainly in being able to take that one step outside of what is normal, what is expected. Oh, it's the ending. Speaking of upper crust, my God. I think I sort of share Anya's view of art. Are there chichis? <laughs> focus, Alex, focus. This is the ending reaction. Oh, we got a rival or yeah, rival seems. I didn't think about it, but I'm getting a sense there's going to be a lot of characters developing. This could end up being a rich cast. And yeah, we're going to go to school, spoiler alert. We're going to pass this exam to Eden. I like the song, it's very chill. I'm sure it'll grow on me too. Aww. Make a little dance, a little synchronized dance. Champagne for dinner. It's, I could go on. And then she just goes into cute dreamland. Sweet, beautiful, love it. I'm like, all right, well, the wife shopping is over, so how much more fun could it be? But no, each episode <laughs> gets better. <laughs> I don't know, it just feels good. It feels good to watch. I got a lot of hope for these characters. I sort of already have a feeling that I like them. They're special enough, but also different enough and complement each other enough to make the whole thing really compelling. <laughs>